Hello everyone, Chris Long with Connected Correctly. Today's video might be a little lengthy, but I think there's gonna be some people in the future that will really appreciate this one. Uh, this might answer some questions for people who are frustrated about putting in a aftermarket brake controller in their Ford Ranger. This is specifically for 2019 and newer models. Um, we today are putting in a Red Arc Tow Pro Elite TPE brake controller in this vehicle for a nice streamlined custom appearance. And it's not going the way that it normally does. And I wanted to show you what we found because these problems will probably become more prevalent as more and more people are adding aftermarket towing equipment to the Ford Ranger. What we have found is the Ford Ranger 2019 up when it has the factory tow package um, installed to the vehicle uh, with a factory receiver hitch and a seven way plug on it those trucks almost always have well they always have up to this point they've had either a, a hard connector or blunt cut wires that will support the installation of an aftermarket brake controller but even the ford rangers that don't have the factory tow package uh, this is an aftermarket receiver hitch that we've already installed uh, they usually just have the the ones without the tow package have a hole in the bumper and then a four-way wiring plug that's attached to this little bracket here on the bottom side of the bumper even those vehicles that, that just have the four-way plug, we have noticed that they have had at least blunt cut wires inside the cab of the vehicle uh, to attach your aftermarket brake controller to. This truck doesn't have them. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you where those are usually located. Uh, there are probably other YouTube videos you've already seen about those locations. Um, you're probably not gonna learn anything new if you've already seen those, so you can fast forward this part if you want. You don't have to take up the rear threshold or the little threshold cover of the inside trim panel to see these, but if you are gonna get up in there and work on them, it's a good idea to take those out of the way so you got more room to work. Speaking of more room to work, I actually took the driver's seat out of the truck, four quick bolts and unplugging this wiring harness, six and a half, seven and a half minutes, your seat's out, gives you a lot more room to work in here. Those wires are usually located right up in this area. I'm gonna try to get in here I'm blocking the light here. Let's see if I can get the light better for you. Okay. Um, those wires are usually located. You'll see right here is your main, your main harness bundle right here coming out of the firewall. Now I've unwrapped mine trying to find wires. So yours will probably be wrapped in more tape than that. But this is the main harness bundle coming through the firewall on the wall of the vehicle. You'll see various wiring connectors that are snapped to the wall and this connector back here, um, what you'll usually find is that if the truck is equipped with the wires you're looking for, they're usually right here in this location uh, where these wire harnesses all come together, uh, together in this junction area. Um, it's usually three to four wires. Colors can vary from model to model, but you're looking primarily for a solid blue wire, which is brake control output. And I've also seen that brake control output also be green or green and black, green and black stripe. Um, but if you can find those two wires, you'll find the other two or three with it, usually either all bundled or taped up together in this general area. Um, this truck does not have them, simply not there. I've been all the way up underneath the dash. Um, I've been all inside the wall here. I've been under the carpet. I've been inside the grommet. I've been behind the power distribution box. I even uh, found the, the uh, trailer oh the trailer uh control module in this truck um it's on the passenger side let me see if i get the light here got the, the glove box down the, the trailer control module on the truck is here on the passenger side it's this white box uh right in this area you can see those three plugs or that small black one and these two white ones um, I even look for blunt cut wires over here because I know that that's where the trailer control module is at. Uh, no blunt cut wires over here. By the way, the TPE is not going to do any good. Um, it's just, I just figured I'd look over here for it. What this is basically doing is converting your input wires. This little plug here is left turn, right turn, and brake lights. They feed into the TPE. It converts those so that your left turn, right turn, and, and brakes get unified onto uh, common circuits. Uh, this is more than likely your power input on the red wire, your ground here. And then these are our output wires, which you can see green, yellow, and brown. 
That yellow is going to be left turn brake, green is going to be right turn brake, and brown will more than likely be tail lights. And those go all the way back to the four way plug at the back bumper. Notice there's no other wires coming out of that output socket. Another uh, kind of a red flag here that this may have no other provisions but those three circuits. Okay, so that being said, if you have a Ford Ranger that does not have blunt cut wires or factory provided wiring to get your brake controller installed, you will have to do a hard wire installation. installation. And that'll vary depending on what product you get. We are doing the TPE by Red Arc today, so it does require a little bit more uh, finesse, if you will, to make it look all nice, neat, and pretty. Um, I've taken some of these panels here apart to see if I've got uh, some good places to put the remote control knob. We have settled on this panel right here next to the shifter. This is the panel that goes around the shifter. And we're going to put your control knob on this one right here. So your brake control activation unit will be about the size of my thumbnail. And it'll be located right here. And that's the only part of the brake controller you'll see. That's what's so cool about the TPEs. Uh, when they're done but they do require a little bit more panel removal and installation time to get everything wired to it but uh we're going to run our wire from the remote control knob from here back under here up to where we mounted the tpe which is up underneath the dash we'll go through the firewall uh, to get power to the battery we're going to do that by means of if i can show you back in under here there's a grommet back there. You can just see it. I'll try to point it out here, right back there. And we were able to drill a small hole right in the center of that grommet and through the inside uh, area. Be sure, be sure to watch what you're doing when you drill through firewalls. Don't, don't drill into wires. We drill a small hole through that. And we've got our power wire now coming out from the TPE and we will be in, uh, attaching it to uh, the power stud here at the, at the battery. Of course, there's an inline uh, fuse holder uh, that will protect that circuit right there. So that'll get us power to the TPE. Um, now, the fact that you don't have a factory supplied brake pedal wire, there is a wire, I'll show it to you, on the brake pedal switch that is brake on, brake off. Some people call it the BOO wire, B-O-O. -O. Um, it's located on the switch right here and it is that purple one right there the violet one that one comes hot with the brake pedal however we're going to strongly discourage you from getting your brake control uh brake input signal from that wire using the little vampire clips or whatever and the reason why is with these more sophisticated electronics on these trucks that used to be that when you hit the brake pedal, all it did was illuminate the brake lights on the vehicle. Nowadays, not so much. Those brake light wires can do other things. They can, they can work in conjunction with trailer sway control devices. They can work with your anti-lock braking devices. They can work with all kinds of other vehicle systems. And the last thing you wanna do is clip into that. And when you squeeze the manual override on your brake controller, it causes things to happen that aren't supposed to happen. Can that be accomplished with the diode? Yes, it can. I can get into that in just a little bit. But at the same time, proportional controllers, especially more popular ones like the Takancha Prodigy P2, P3, and others, they actually send out a pulse on that, on that line monitoring whether or not your trailer is connected or not. And sometimes those pulses can feed back through that line uh, and, and cause problems. So we don't recommend uh, attaching to that line on newer vehicles right at the brake switch. So where am I gonna get my, my brake wire? Well, unfortunately, this truck doesn't even have a chimsel wire. Sometime at the back of the vehicle, chimsel stands for center high mounted stop lamp, which is typically your third brake light right here. Most of the time on pickup trucks, they actually give you a spare chimsel wire at the back so that if you put a camper shell or something on that would block that light, you have a chimsel wire that can come up and run the third brake light on your camper shell. Um, it has to be a brake light wire, not a one of the brake turn signal wires on the truck because then, yeah, it'll come on with brakes, but then it could, it could actually cause it to blink when you're using one of your, your uh, turn signals. Anyways, this vehicle does not have a chimsel wire at the back, an auxiliary chimsel. So what we are going to do to get your brake pedal input 
It's a long power. You already have to run an output wire from your brake controller. And what we're going to do is we're going to come from the TPE under the carpet. And we're going to go, since I took the seat out, it's real easy to get to this particular grommet. There's a grommet through the floorboard right there. I'm going to go through that grommet, which will put me out underneath the vehicle there. I'll be able to run that along the frame, along the other wiring harness, all the way to the back. Now, I'm using a harness that Red Arc supplied me with as a test installer that actually has two wires in it. One is a brake control output, which is blue. The other one is brake, brake pedal input or brake sense input wire. The way they do things in Australia, guys, is they actually have separate brakes, brake lights from turn signals. That's why they get their brake signal from the actual trailer plug. That doesn't work here in the United States, so this harness is obsolete in the States. But it's kind of a cool thing to have because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this red wire, which is ran from my TPE, which normally would attach to the brake pedal switch or a factory provided brake input wire under the dash. Since we don't have anything sensible back there, this truck has separate brake lights from turn signals. The turn signals and brakes are separate. When I take this light out, we have one wire in here that is dedicated to brakes. It is this red wire right there. That is a brake only wire, I've already tested it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run, and what you would do without this harness that, that I have, you would run a wire from this brake pedal input, or this brake pedal, all the way to the front, up through the body the same way we did with the other blue wire, and that will be your brake pedal input switch. However, you cannot just attach to the wire with a vampire clip because if you squeeze the manual override, or in this case, push the manual override on the brake controller, it's gonna cause this single brake light on the truck to come on. How do we guard against that? We put in a diode. Um, let me see if I can lay this down here. And uh, Red Arc does have these diodes. Uh, let me see if I can find the one that we will be using. Here it is right here. They have these diodes available. We're only gonna use two wires. The orange wire is my input. The two reds are output. We only need one output, so I'm gonna actually cut one of these off. This is my input wire right here. So I will attach this orange wire to that red wire here. So when I do hit the brake pedal, of the truck, that's letting this diode know that I am applying brakes, but then one of my output wires will be what I run using this wire and this cord or your own RAN wire up to the red wire at the TPE. I know that all sounds complicated. If you're doing this work, you'll understand it. That way, not only does the TPE know when you're hitting the brake pedal, because this brake light comes on and tells it to, but when you squeeze the manual override or push the button on your TPE, this diode will not allow the current to backfeed, keeping this light from illuminating. So you'll need a, a diode of some sort. Red Arc does sell those. Uh, you can also get different types of diodes. It's a very simple one-way directional diode that you can put in the back. Um, other brake controllers uh, have similar situations. I think that uh, Takancha has a brake control uh, universal kit with a built-in diode in the red wire but they want you to attach that to the brake pedal switch that violet wire that I showed you inside I don't think that that's a good idea um, I would attach to either if you can find the chimsel wire for that light up there or one of the brake lights at the back that is going to be a safer place to make that connection um, just to make sure that you're not affecting other vehicle systems so that being said if you have a Ford Ranger, 2019 and newer, and you cannot find these blunt cut wires or brake controller provisions like you're seeing everyone say that's there, you're not alone. These trucks are out there. In these cases, they will have to be completely hardwired. If you're not familiar with some sophisticated 12 volt wiring systems, I would certainly allow a professional to do it. If you've got the time to figure things out and do it on your own, more power to you, but it could take an unexperienced person a whole day to install a kit like this. So just throwing all that out there. Again, uh, my name's Chris Long. This is Connected Correctly. Uh, this is the type of work that we do. 
If you've got questions, comments, anything like that, feel free to leave them in the comments section. You can even uh, uh, call us directly if you'd like to, to visit. We do do national training and consultation over situations like this, and I've even walked people through installation steps over the phone. We used to do that for free. We do have to charge a little bit for our services when we're uh, consulting and counseling people over the phone, but we'd be more than willing to help you through that if you need it. So at any rate, there you go. That's the 411. We'll get this thing installed. Maybe I can throw up some pictures and some stuff of what all it looks like once we're finished. Hope you guys have a great day. You got any questions, let us know. Peace out.